tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. Lenny, what's up, man? I'm Dario. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you as well. I'm great. Oh, my goodness. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, we're excited to have you. I mean, we listen, we, I feel like we have the whole Ruthless cast on our show the last couple of weeks. We had Yvonne on. We got a yes. couple other people coming on. Courtney Stewart is great. Looking, looking great. Courtney, you look like you got a little summertime going on. You ready for the summertime? That's what that's about. Yeah, what summertime, like summertime in my house. <laughs> summertime Lovely. in the house. The summer flare. Yeah. Right, exactly. Gotta keep it. <laughs> the one now, time Lenny, a day or week to get dressed. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. It gives me an excuse. You don't want to see what's below the, the navel, though, right now. You just want to see what's up, you know, chest, chest and up. Hey, I'm, I'm like the news pants, reporter. So this is great. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like I'm like the news reporter on Good Morning America, the, the guy uh, yes. a week ago who got caught with his pants down, literally. <laughs> I didn't see that. Well, I got to check that oh, out. Oh, that hilarious. was hilarious. It was hilarious. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 Man, you're in New York, right? Yes, sir. Epicenter of all the craziness. Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got right. the real craziness there. I mean, you, California isn't Ooh. far behind, but but New York, you guys, yeah, it, you, you've been hit hard the last the last couple yeah. months. It's been rough. But, it's been oh my gosh, what has it been? Seven, almost eight weeks now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I try not to go outside much just because like I'm trying to follow the rules. But when I do for, you know, groceries and whatnot, oh, man, I wish more people were adhering to the rules. But then again, I'm like, what is your yeah. situation? Why are you not following the rules? I don't, you never know what's going on here. It's, it's kind of bonkers, but I love my city. What have you been doing to stay sane? I have been exercising maybe, you know, four or five times a week, reading uh, when I have the focus to do it, because I'm not gonna lie, and it's, 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 it's hard to focus these days. <laughs> um meditation has been really great like i have a bunch of guided ones i do and these breathing exercises that that aid to it that aid it but yeah that's and uh hanging out with um my lady we we are the best of friends so thankfully hey. you know yeah hey that's helpful <laughs> hey. yes super helpful Quar i don't want to be in this nonsense alone what <laughs> Quarantine and chilling. I ain't mad at you, brother. Quarantine and chilling. <laughs> but listen, man, your show is doing great. Uh, Ruthless on BET Plus. Tyler Perry's new production. I mean, he. I don't know when the man sleeps, but he continues to make unbelievable work. And uh, you have a very interesting character on there. See, I'm, I'm into yeah. like kind of like these dark storylines and and these menacing type of storylines. And your character yeah. is quite menacing, actually. You know, yeah. you yeah, you yeah. kind of you get you're you're the enforcer. You get to play some dark things, you know, and, yeah. and you got a pretty yeah. powerful role. You you're right next to the higher the highest guy on the on the show. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, it is crazy the things that happen throughout the season, and I mean every episode literally leaves you hanging off the edge of a cliff, and I get to be. <laughs> most of the reason why you're hanging on the edge of a cliff a lot of times, I, I like to say. Um, and it's, it's so funny because this is so far from who I am as a person that to, 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 you know, to have this kind of reception of that character has been, has kind of blown my mind a lot. I'm like, you guys have no idea who I really am. <laughs> you might think I'm this crazy dude who is, who will do anything for his cult, anything. Well, so, clearly, yeah. you, you, you convinced them all. <laughs> Go ahead, Courtney. I was going to say, what did you do to get to that darkness and find that darkness in this character? Oh, man. Well, beautifully, beautifully. <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, Daikon is a, is a verb of myself, who I might have been if I didn't have strong Black women in my life. I'll say it right off the off GP, like, I had a lot of demons I had to exercise, right? And if, if not for those people in my life, I could have been, I could have gone to jail. I could have been with the wrong crowds. I could have been involved in a lot of nonsense. So it's almost as if a piece of that, like the, the memory of that energy and that, that personhood like stuck with me. So I, I'm able to tap into it. And through my acting training, I was able to really tap into it. And 
I don't know, it's almost like switching, flipping a uh, switch now. And also when you have amazing castmates as I do, like they, they let me, they let me play. They let me go there and they, they act off of me. And that just gives me so much fire, fuel for the fire, you know? So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot. Of I don't really think also, about it because it's crazy. Now, a lot of actors also have a hard time when they are playing sort of these darker characters and things, shaking it off at the end of the day and coming out of that. Did you have any trouble with that, or how did you sort of separate that once you were done? It was it was easy ish for the first like two weeks. Uh, I was just like you know when they say action, I'm I'm Daikon, boom, and I'm. You know, I know what it's like to want something so bad that you will do anything for it and you might step on toes to do it. I know what that energy is like, right? But I think the third weekend, I fell in love with my cast. I was like, I'm tired of treating y'all like trash. It, I was having <laughs> nightmares, like it was getting crazy. I'm like, all right, this is, I gotta do something. Like this is, this is getting, this is too much. I'm on edge all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> But yeah, and it was interesting when I when I voiced this to my castmates, like uh, I was like, guys, I'm tired of treating you like trash, and they all ran and hugged me and whatnot. And I was like, okay, I feel better now. This is great. Here we go. Okay, you guys, Aww. it's all in my mind. You don't really hate me. <laughs> but wow, yeah, <laughs> you got to be aware if you're playing these dark characters that it can consume you for sure. Well, let's yeah. just acknowledge the fact of the dopeness of the name, Daikon. You know what? Like right? I'm gonna take that name. I think my name my son Daikon. Like that's some that's some powerful <laughs> sh right there. That's some powerful <laughs> sh right there. Daikon. What's it your really name? Is... Daikon. Daikon. What? Nobody's messing Daikon. with you when your name is Daikon. No, it's scary. <laughs> Nobody. <I'm scared>. Right. <laughs> and it's funny. Before we started shooting, no one really knew how to pronounce the name. So, you know, people were saying uh, Deacon, people were saying Dickon, people were saying all types of <laughs> wrongness. And then when Tyler finally <laughs> confirmed it, like I couldn't walk anywhere around set without someone screaming, Daikon, 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 Daikon. Best cult members of all time. Daikon, 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 Daikon. I mean, it was just, it was nuts. <laughs> but yeah, that name is definitely powerful. And then I hear My that you had a D, very- So people are calling me Lenny Daikon Thomas now, also. Oh, like, hey, so, that's not a bad thing, man. Hey. I'll take hey, it, I mean, you, real stars. You made your me. mark. They watch <laughs> You made the mark. And I hear you very interesting process with your auditions, which a lot of people I hear have that when it comes to Tyler, because he moves so quickly, is that you yeah. literally auditioned, self-taped yourself on a Thursday, and by mm -hmm. Sunday, you were on a plane and by that next Wednesday, you were filming. Yeah, yeah. I've never been shot out of a cannon before, and that was the closest thing to being shot out of a cannon. I, what, and then <laughs> the turnaround, because of how fast he shoots, I was like, how are we, how is this, what, we're doing 100 pages, how, what, we're doing 100 pages a day? How does that, how does that, how is that possible? Um, but I was, I was more determined than I was nervous or anxious. I was like, you know, I'm gonna take this, this, this nervousness, this anxiousness and turn it to excitement. I have people depending on me. And when, when the, the shoe is on the foot like that, when people are depending on you, you can do anything. It's amazing what you can do. And then it just so happens that my cast is so loving and caring and we looked out for each other. Like we have done this before, like we've been here before. Yeah. Like we were born to do this particular project together it was it blew my mind I, would, I didn't want to go home I was like I, I live in Atlanta now I, I've I decided I'm not leaving I'm staying you know? <laughs> but yeah it took everything to do this well and so far so good Oof. <laughs> Every I, I, week I like love Christmas. what you I love what you said about the fact of uh you took that nervous energy and made it uh, energy, like you know, because mm. I know for me, yes. I would, I would be it, that turnaround, that quickness, and then having to. I know that Tyler's kind of like a one take kind of guy, and you know, that's some pressure right there. You know what I mean? Like that's what? pressure, and for you to be Seriously. able to do that and just come out of it and turn that around, that's dope, man. That's like inspirational, inspirational words for many people. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's also kind of amazing what you can do when. Um, I mean, I'll keep it a buck. My life was kind of falling apart, like right around the time I got the role. Like, you know, I uh, broke up with, we're back together now, but 
you know, I just get out of a bad breakup. I moved out of the spot the week of flying to Atlanta. Like I'm scattered. And this is, this was my opportunity to not go back to my survival jobs, which, yeah. you know, unfortunately I just couldn't stand them anymore. I've been doing it for years and they were, they were taking a toll on my spirit. So I was like, do or die, Mr. Thomas, you're going to bust this down in the best way if it kills you. And thankfully I survived. <laughs> I Let's love see what that. season two brings me. <laughs> <laughs> put it out there. Put it out there. And put it out there. We're gonna put that in the universe. And then working yes, with sir. Tyler, you know, since he is obviously just the master of what he does, have you taken mm -hmm. away anything or learned anything about yourself personally from working with him and just observing how he is on set or how he does his writing or how he does his 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 directing? What is something that you may have taken away from that that you can use for your future? in this business? Presence. Um, there are, I don't know many people alive or I don't think I've met anyone with a presence like his. And it was almost as if he was the general of a military. You know what I mean? The way everything moved around him, the way it was a collective effort, but we followed his lead. Everyone was trying to keep up with him. It wasn't even, there was no like, wow. It was like, all right, Tyler's here, cool, let's get it. You know what I mean? Um, what I, the biggest thing I took away is that I can dream bigger. Like, I want my version of what he has because he, he blew my mind. I'm like, wow, okay, so this is how you do this, okay. And you took yourself from nothing to an empire. You have a black Hollywood slash Disneyland world in Georgia, what? Come on, brother. Like. If that's not inspiring in and of itself, I don't I don't know what is. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, dream bigger. That's the biggest thing. Dream bigger. Want more for like yourself that. so that you can give more to others. Because that's another thing that I took from him. If you're not here trying to better someone else's life, you're kind of missing the point of life. Mm. You know what I mean? I yeah. personally don't need much to be happy. And most of my happiness comes with how I can benefit someone else's life, whether it's family or a close friend. Like I rather, I would love to scale that up if it's meant for me. But if I'm not, if I'm in this life for me, this life is whack. Sorry, you know. I feel that. I mean, especially well, just, we, I think we're learning that right now with like, being on lockdown and being quarantined. Yeah. Yep. One hundred percent. Yeah. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And then with the with the show, what's been some of your like what, what's been one of your favorite episodes to shoot? Hmm. <clears throat> so because we shot like 10 different episodes at once, like every day had was was uh, were scenes from 10 different episodes. Like we, we, we shot pretty much everything on the the compound the first week and a half. And then they then they, they switch focus to the to uh, I would say the FBI and the cops. Right. So. My favorite, oh man, it hasn't shown yet. So I don't know if I can say it or if it's smart to say it, but uh, I had to learn how to ride an ATV in like five minutes. I've never ridden an ATV in my life. I've never ridden a motorcycle. I mean, the, the, I used to ride motor scooters and those things are like pathetically slow. This thing has some power. So <laughs> like, okay, cool. Tyler wants to shoot in 10 minutes. So you're going to hop on this. I turn it on and just ease on. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to what? I'm doing what? <laughs> oh, I mean, we got a stunt guy if you want. And I was like, no, 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 no. I have a chance to do my own stunts. I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a prey. I won't hurt myself and give it my best. But that was probably the most uh, fun moment shooting was, was riding around the ATV. Yeah. The that's ATVs. It. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you... You talked a little bit about how, you know, obviously Tyler is an inspiration and being, what was it like for you just to go to the studio and like go to his lot and just that experience alone? Like, what was that energy like? Oh man, since from the moment of being, uh, getting the offer to flying out, right, on the flight over, I've never flown first class before. That was amazing. I literally felt my body my physiology changed. Like, this is like, hey, you are no longer this person who left New York. You are, you are on another plane. Ride that way, right? Um, oh my goodness. It was like a fairy tale. It was like, 
it was like a dream. It's, it's, it's interesting enough, he has this big old building called the Dream Building, and it's the, one of the first things you see when you get into the complex. But I'm like, someone's gonna pinch me and I'm gonna wake up in Brooklyn. I know it. I know it. I'm, 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 even now, today, I'm like, someone's gonna come by and be like, oh, by the way, click. No, you're still in Brooklyn, bro. Sorry. Ha, ha, ha. I, I mean, it's crazy. It was, it was like, it was like an affirmation from the universe itself saying, hey, you know that man that you wanted to be? Here you go. Go be that man right now. Go do it right now. And I was like, well, okay, let's get it. <laughs> let's step two. Let's not question. Let's just tunnel vision and bang. You got people to show up for. Boom. You're already winning. Let's go. You know? Yeah. It's like it, it was the time. It was the time. It was like the timing couldn't have been more perfect for real. And now are yeah. you one of those people that uh, like, you, you know, as far as like manifesting things and, and believing in the universe that that things happen for a certain reason or that you can manifest these things into existence in your life? To an extent, yes. I feel like um, actually to the highest extent, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Uh, you won't get exactly what you ask for, but you'll get a variation of it. Like I, I watched this documentary called The Secret and I've seen the book and I've, you know, I've heard of the concept before, but for some reason, this one time, it just, it just hit. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. And a week, the, no, the very next day, I got an affirmation confirming what was, I was like, no way. This is nonsense. I didn't expect this. It was like, a, it was a residual for something that, for, for a, a TV show that I did, that was way more than I expected. And I was like, whoa, um, wait, my, what, what just happened? Cause this is a further, this is a step towards the direction of uh, what I asked for. And then I just kept, I just, I was like, you know what? I'm, let's not stop there. Let's not question it. Let's just, let's go deeper with it. What does it feel like to have the thing you want? Yeah. And then reverse engineer it. And then one after the other, I'm like, wait a second. I'm knocking all these goals off my list. The, all these dreams I had are becoming a reality. Wait, maybe we're more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. You know, maybe we should tap into that yeah. source and find a way to pay it forward so that it keeps coming back around. Because if you don't pay it forward, like I've said, I, what's the point? What do you need all that stuff for? <laughs> what do you need all that stuff for? If, you, if it's not to bless somebody else, what do you, what do you need all that stuff for? Yeah. You know what I mean? And you and I believe that you get blessed by giving blessings. You know what I mean? Not that you do it on purpose, yes. but not that you do it to get get back. But <laughs> exactly, you, you definitely get blessed by your heart. You know what I mean? And just yeah. wanting to give. I truly believe exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, silent mentors. He doesn't know I exist quite yet. His name is Eric uh, Thomas. He's the ET, the hip hop preacher. One of the things he says: Be a blessing while you're waiting on your blessings. If you know me and have come into contact with me. You know that's how I get down. And there's no, it's not a coincidence that I'm as fortunate as I am. It's because I started following this, this mantra, this, this moniker, this way of thinking and, and energetically as well. I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't really believe in coincidence anymore. I, I think yeah. what happens is what's supposed to happen, I'm, even if you know, bad or good. But if you keep putting the good out, what, what you put out comes back. So you, you gotta be mindful, you know what I mean? You gotta be mindful in that space. And for yeah. someone who has maybe not seen the show or has heard about the show and wants to tune in, what would mm. you, how would you describe it to them to get them to watch the show? Hmm. If you want a glimpse of what it's like to be in a off the wall cult, deeper than you know, the, the stories that we've heard of to this day, definitely tune in. If you want to know what it's like to devote yourself to a belief to the point where you are willing to sacrifice your state of mind and well-being, check that out. Yeah. <laughs> and if you like drama, <laughs> please tune in. Because this, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Five minutes in, you're like, what am I watching? <laughs> it's a roller coaster. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, and Tyler has a special way of actually intertwining real life stories into his yeah. into his writing and, and, and into his productions as well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. Oof. And I'm wondering because I mean this is a spin-off of the oval and I can just see those worlds colliding 
very soon. I can't, I can't wait to see what he comes up with. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's all, he's never disappointing. No. Seriously. <clears throat> well, another aspect Man. of this show that we like to do is uh, we talk about a topic that's going on in the news per week. Mm -hmm. And in this particular week, I know a lot of people, uh, we, we've been in an uproar because of what happened to the young African-American man in Atlanta, Ahmad oh, Arbery. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow, uh, I just noticed today that they're doing a run for him tomorrow to celebrate his birthday that's coming up. He was 25, as everyone mm -hmm. knows with the story, uh, wow. and was, uh, was, was gunned down by two gunmen who mm -hmm. allegedly said that he was doing some illegal things in our neighborhood and it turned to violence and they shot him and these men are still running free. So yeah. this story has hit the headlines as a African-American man, as an African-American actor, you know, how did, the, how did you feel when you, when you saw this story? You know, what, where it hits close to home for us all, but how did you feel when you saw this particular story this week? <clears throat> Unfortunately, because this is such a prevalent thing, that's, that's just, well, it just, it seemed like it would just never stop happening. Like I was, I've desensitized myself to everything going on. Like I, it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm like, I'm literally like, when is it my turn? You know what I mean? When is yeah. it gonna be? When, when am I gonna find myself on the other side of somebody's gun? Who, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like some radical, radical change needs to happen. I, I don't know how. But now, I know now, you know what I mean? And, and it's just like, cause it's only a matter of time before again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And honestly, to keep myself from being, feeling debilitated, I had to, I had to protect, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. seriously, every time I leave my house, I'm in New York city. Every time I leave my house, I have that fear on the back of my head. I'm like, okay, what's gonna happen? Like, what's gonna happen? What are we? What are we? What are we becoming? What? What? You know, it's it's. I don't have words for it. It's 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 tragic. It's ridic. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what to say. I'm. I'm so. To be. I'm. Um, there's this quote. Um, James Baldwin said, "To be a Negro in this country, and to be relatively conscious." Is to be is to be full of rage every single day, and yeah. fighting off that rage every single day, and that's how I feel. Like yeah. I'm literally, I have, to, I have to meditate. If I don't, I'm gonna be so mad. I have to do these. I have to work out. I have to be mindful about what I'm doing. I have to be conscious of, you know, what I'm giving my energy and how I'm treating the people in my life. I have to be because. <laughs> I might find myself in a situation where I'm having a bad day, whereas for a white guy having a bad day, he'll be treated a certain way. But for me, I could end up with riddled with bullets. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it almost makes me like, I feel bad for playing Daikon. You know what I mean? In, in yeah. situations where the evils of the world show their face, I'm like, damn. Well, you know, I'm telling a story, so I can't be too hung up on that, but. This is that he is a, a he's a symptom literally of the system. He is a symptom yeah. of yeah. this thing that's been happening. So I can't even blame him for being how he is, because yeah. I mean you 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 put something up under enough enough pressure, it's gonna bust, it's gonna burst or break or crumble. Yeah, if it's a pipe, stand back. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I feel like yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel like black men specifically, we are pipes ready to burst because you know at any second someone can just take us out and yeah. not go to jail or not suffer any consequence it's like is the open season on us are we like deer all of a sudden like what is happening you know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah well the the positive of it is that at least we're seeing there's such an outrage over this that people are banding together and they yes. are, and, and I mean, everyone's social media yesterday was blowing up with the image of Ahmad and, yeah. and just the support around this to get these guys in jail. And, you know, the, the even yes. I, I noticed people who were non African American and Latino who also were posting to support the I justice for this story. And, yeah. you know, I, 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 I think that's, that's a powerful message within itself, you know? Yeah. And that, um, thankfully, is happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we all should be enraged right now. 
You know what I mean? All of us. Everybody. And taking some type of action. I have no idea what this is. The helplessness is another reason why I try to have to not respond with rage is because I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what to do with this information. I don't know how I can help. I have no idea what to do. And it just seems like, you know, we're living in the world of uh, Batman where criminals can just do whatever they want and get away with it. You know what I mean? Especially under our current political yeah leader yeah. we'll just put it like that yeah well under the current leader but i mean at least in this situation yeah i i feel exactly obviously all the feelings you guys have expressed as well like helplessness in ways that i can't even deal with but yeah. there are things that are being done so we just want to yeah. encourage everybody if you haven't seen it we'll put it in the i guess we can put it in the link of our um of this video like where you can email we're still sending emails to the police chief and to nice. the DA's office, inundate them with emails and phone calls. And if you're in Georgia, actually, if you're in Georgia and can get to Brunswick, um, the Glen County Courthouse, they're doing a protest tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, nice. at, on the stairs there. If you want to donate to the protesters so that they can have water and things like that, we can also give you a link for that and where you can donate nice. for that. So at least you feel like you're doing something. Because for me also, even though I saw all the social media posts, I don't know how you guys feel, but like the social media activism felt almost, uh, it made my helplessness worse. Like I felt like, okay, here we go, mm. posting his face again. Everybody's yeah. saying these wonderful things about him and say his name, but like, is that going to do anything? Or what's like the that, you know what I'm saying? So what's yeah. the action? So I do appreciate yeah. that there are people on the ground. Actually, uh, so a, a former schoolmate of mine who's an attorney in Georgia is um, leading the charge, like sending letters to, he's spoken to the mayor and done a bunch of different things. So we will definitely share that information and keep looking it up guys. Cause it sucks to just feel, especially we're in the house sitting here and all we have yeah. just to sit and think about it and to yeah, feel like seriously. you really can't, like I feel even more helpless. Cause I feel like I'm just yeah, like yeah. stuck in the house, not allowed to do anything. So right? exactly. the email will help you feel better. Like just help us out and keep sending the emails. Cause yeah. that's what we have right now. I it's love all that. about the support. Let's figure it out. Yep. And uh, well, we're gonna we gotta wrap up soon, Lenny. So speaking of being in the house and on lockdown, outside mm -hmm. of your show, what <laughs> other things are you binge watching that are keeping you sane? Oh man, uh, I just finished season three of Ozark. Oh Woo. my god! Yes, yeah. that's my show. That's, that's my show. The what? Listen, that show so is good. phenomenal. Got me looking at my lady like, can we Marty Bird and Wendy Bird the game? Can we just like, <laughs> can we just take over this? Can we get it popping like that? You know what I mean? Um, besides that, what's the latest? Ooh, Watchmen. My gosh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the timing. Yeah. What? I watched it twice. That's how much, that's how affected I was by it. I'm like, this is, I didn't even really care much for the comic. I shouldn't have said that out loud, but I did. I didn't really care much for the comic, <laughs> but this show, my, <laughs> like any any show that's willing to tackle a historical situation and expose things that you wouldn't necessarily learn in history class, even though we should be learning about this stuff in history class, um, I'm all for it. Seriously, let's yeah. let's 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 take the veils over our heads and see what's been going on, and you know learn from it so we can stop doing the same nonsense and have a better life. Like for real, it's time. It's We're too time. smart for this. Yeah. It's time. We're too smart for this. 100%. <laughs> and what's the first thing that you're doing once this lockdown is over? Oh, Ooh, man. I want to go, I want to give my mom a hug and a kiss. I haven't seen her in that oh, long. She's that. like my number one supporter. And I just, I can't imagine, you know, cause I told her once, you know, upon a time, I'm gonna make it big. And I got to say, mama made it, you know what I mean? But I just want to, yeah. like, as the world is learning about her son, I want to know what that seems and feels like from her eyes. But uh, the best I can do is just love on her until until I can, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's the first thing I want to do. Well, Mother's Day Mother's is this Day. weekend. So Mother's Day I, I, is Sunday. I, I hope you, oh, man, Sunday. I'm give her a virtual yeah. kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Lenny, where can fans find more about your character, Daikon, and any new projects that you're working on? I know you got several things coming up, like Barbara and Blood Conscious and the Operation. But if people oh, yeah. want to know about that, where can they find you on social media? You can find me on uh, Instagram at Lenny Thomas. And same thing as uh, Twitter, Lenny Thomas. 
um, I love to, to post about the goings on of my career. I don't really post too many personal things just because for right now, it's just, I don't, uh, I'm, that's just something I'd rather wait till later to do. I don't know, I feel like now, you know, entertainment and uplifting things is what's, is what's the most necessary. So, you know, if it's, if my personal isn't, you know, so super uplifting, I don't really want to post it. I'd rather not um, do that. But uh, as far as other projects, like I'm, I'm these, these, these films, sometimes they take forever. So you'll learn about them throughout. I'll keep, I'll keep uh, my, my, my social medias uh, updated with that, but definitely reach out on, on social on uh, Lenny Thomas at Lenny Thomas on both Twitter and, and Instagram. Yeah. And, and Courtney, where can fans find you? I am oh, yes. all over social media at Stuart Starlet. And I'm on social media under Daryl Kristen and uh, all the all the platforms. Lenny, it's nice. been a pleasure having you on the show today, it's man. You got to come back. Likewise. Uh, you know, Thank especially you. when that season two kicks off, you got to come back and you know, give us some more insight. And also on these new films that you got coming up and these TV specials and things. So, you know, yes, we, we, we want to follow your career, man. And uh, congratulations. You. You, got, you got great energy. Thank you. So I'm looking forward to seeing where you. your career goes. Thank you, I appreciate that. Looking forward to meeting you guys one of these days. Yes. I know, exactly. You know in, exactly. Studio. <laughs> in studio. In the studio. In the studio, yes, in person. What What's that mean? I don't even, I don't, what does that mean? I don't, I don't. I know, I know. <laughs> that seems like an ancient, an ancient saying now, right? <laughs> Old <laughs> Seriously, concept. Atlantis, yeah. <laughs> right, right. All it's right, Lenny, well, it was a pleasure having you. Right, exactly. Thank you. It was a pleasure, <laughs> man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, you take care now. I appreciate All you. Right. All right. BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content, and be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined.